really fast. Did you wash your hands? No. Teach their own. Man, talk about that Bio 111 taxon video project. Oh my gosh, isn't that due on Tuesday? Sounds like a Tuesday problem to me. Yeah, we can put it off a little more. Yeah. Wait, didn't we both fail the midterm? Oh my god, wait. Eh, 10 out of 25 never sounded that bad. Well, I feel like we should study for the upcoming taxon. I think that's a good idea. Term. Yeah. Let's go into Seaver 100. Brachiobato taxon, dorsal view, side view, bilaterally symmetrical, exclusively marine, includes holoblastic and radial cleavages. Cross section of the brachiopod, initially a larva, undergoes metamorphosis once attached to a substrate, has a lifespan of 30 30 years in the cold. Grunt! Two classes of the brachiopod in the cold, testicardides or articulata, uh, shell valves united by hinge, anus is absent. Second class is the ecardines and inarticulata, has shell valves united by muscle, anus present, um, has two orders, the atremata and neotremata. No! Jose, remember in last lab we learned that there's a lot of methods used to determine where certain taxa are placed in the phylogenetic tree? Oh yeah! Phylogenetic trees differ based upon how they're generated. Factors such as development, morphology, and genome sequencing need to be taken into account, right? Exactly, yeah. So here are the two phylogenetic trees we generated in lab. So this one is based off of character traits. Like cephalization, locomotion, number of appendages, and body systems, right? Yeah, exactly. And this one is based on genetic sequencing. So that's the main reason why they differ if you look at where brachiopod is placed. Paired to the character traits tree, this one is more thorough and a more accurate representation of the evolutionary history of all these taxa because they're based on nucleotide sequencing. By considering how a certain taxon on both the character tree and genetic tree is equally related to all taxa below it, we determined the closest relatives of Brachiopoda to be Chordata and Mollusca. Chordata and Mollusca were both below the taxon Brachiopoda in both trees. <laughs> this third phylogenetic tree is the tree we found in a published journal article. According to the article, the geological records show that the brachiopods originated in the Precambrian period 4,600 million years ago. The oldest brachiopods were the inarticulates belonging to the extinct superfamily Oblacea. As shown on this published phylogenetic tree, brachiopods are morphologically on the deuterostome line, likely as a sister group of the deuterostomia sensu stricto. However, based on molecular phylogenetics, brachiopoda are considered a sister taxon of Foranida. Some reasons that the trees generated from lab appear different from the published phylogenetic tree is that the left side of the published tree only took morphology into account. Comparatively, our character tree was more in-depth because it considered other traits such as cephalization, locomotion, respiration, and type of circulatory system. Nicole, it's probably nothing. Ugh, so many distractions. Now I'm really gonna fail this test. Let's just get some brain food. Let's go to the lair. What's that noise? There it is again. We mustn't startle it. What is it? It's just a measly member of the Brachiopoda taxon. We have captured an elusive member of the taxon Brachiopoda. Please lift your peduncle. <clears throat> Jose, have you ever wondered how Brachiopoda breathe? Uh, yeah. You know, actually, uh, Brachiopoda reproduction is being known as hermaphroditic, but it is known that they reproduce externally. Jeez, all that running has me hungry. What about you guys? Yeah! Well, I'm not hungry, but this brachiopoda sure is. Brachiopoda have intracellular and extracellular digestion properties and are suspension feeders that extract their food out of water that they pump in and out of their shell. For example, they extract plankton and particles of dead organic material from water. Well, brachiopoda are exclusively marine and they're found in all depths of the ocean, usually attached to an object by a muscular stalk called a peduncle. I think that's this right here. They also have holoblastic and radial cleavage. Ah, 
See, I heard that brachiopoda are deuterostomes and have a U-shaped gut with an anus. Is that right? Yeah, it sure is. Hmm. During development among brachiopoda, the blastophore becomes the anus. And I know a thing or two about brachiopoda. They are either protostomes or deuterostomes. Well, their lophophores not only help them obtain food and nutrients, but they're also a point for the diffusion of gases, which are important for them because of their open blood vascular system. Ah, uh, wow. If only they knew how impressively adapted to their environment they are. <sighs> they may not be aware of how awesome they are, but they sure are smart enough to obtain food, respond to their environment, thanks to their nervous system, including their nerve ring, multilocated ganglia, and even some species of the brachiopoda even have adapted chemoreceptor cells to help them better adapt to their environment. Amazing.